So welcome back to the next training of our online video series that has to do with how you can improve your online lecture videos to improve your student outcome and student success. So in this video, we're going to pretty much summarize some of the things that we talked about in our face-to-face -face or online WebEx training. You can find more resources online at online.msstate.edu under our faculty resources tab. Why do I even need to have videos in my online course? Or you may be the professor who is tempted to put a 45 minute lecture up every week for your students. Now, while neither one of these options or routes to teaching online are necessarily wrong, video can be a useful tool to provide your students with multiple ways to learn material. When you're using videos in an online course, it should be used more so as a supplemental aid instead of the backbone of your course. The real backbone of the course is your own lecture material, and your lecture material should be a combination of not only text, but also photos and video. So you can't rely on one more than the other and you really want to create a cohesive learning environment with multiple modes. Oftentimes, professors will enjoy the use of podcast, video, readings, the textbook, and other typed information, such as a typed lecture summary or introduction through the use of a Canvas page. At Mississippi State University, we do utilize the Canvas LMS or learning management system. When we're in Canvas, you have the ability to record your videos straight through there. And you should use this if you're not using it already to also serve as a library to manage and store your videos. This way your videos can easily be implemented into your online learning environment. When you're going online to use Studio to record your videos, you should really keep in mind some key guiding principles of just filming in general. While none of you are probably film experts, and I'm not either, there are some key things to keep in mind. Lighting can make or break a video. We are currently in my office at the Memorial Hall on campus. So I do not have the best lighting, nor do I have external lights in my office to make high production quality videos. I may be tempted to go out and buy a ring light, but I'm here to say that that's not necessarily needed. I oftentimes find that using natural light is the easiest to find and utilize. In my office, I have a giant window. I'll show you. So in my office, you can see I have my camera set up and you can see us on the screen. And we have this window that is providing all of the light towards our film. So no tricks here, no smoke and mirrors. I really am just using natural light to improve my light for my video instead of my overhead fluorescent. Now in post editing, you do have the ability to adjust your exposure, adjust your contrast and color grade a little if you want to go that step further. But if you just use good light on the front end, it's not exactly needed. Now you may have noticed on that flip around that I am actually using one of my Canon DSLRs. You may not have access to this type of equipment. And if you don't, again, it's perfectly okay. So almost all laptops nowadays are equipped with a webcam. When you're filming, you also want to keep in mind that you can add in things over your video. So you, I could, in theory, make a picture pop up here. And now I'm going to talk about this picture on the image as it relates to what we're learning in the course. I can annotate this picture with different arrows or text and things like that. Changing the scene up really keeps everything a little more interactive. Our students do not have the longest attention span, so we want to make sure that our videos are engaging and interactive and enticing to keep them watching. I don't know if you've ever used the Insight feature on Canvas Studio, but it is a great tool to look and see if you are retaining your students' attention. So again, while I am using a Canon DSLR, you can use your webcam, but you can also just use your phone. Majority of phones nowadays have the ability to record not only at 1080p HD, but they can also record at 4K. Another thing that you wanna keep in mind when you're filming is you want to look at the camera. Uh, it can be really tempting to like look over at the screen that you're recording on and talk to yourself like you're looking in the mirror. And you can tell that I'm not looking at the camera here. If I direct my attention back to the lens, it feels a lot more personable. So looking at the camera lens, again, is one of those things that we oftentimes overlooked. So in my office, above my webcam, I keep this little dude. It's a little blurry. Um, and he's just a little 
Star Wars figurine and he sits on top of my camera. So whenever I'm talking, instead of looking at this big circle of depth, I'm just looking at my little stormtrooper and I'm teaching him my lesson. So that helps me look into my camera at the actual lens. So the other thing I want to talk about briefly when it comes to just the overall pre-setup of recording a video is your background. Now I mentioned we are in my office and my office is not really the best place. You can see I have a fairly busy background and I am actually hiding this fan with my body. What can you do about this? I would recommend decluttering your background and just trying to remove any distractions. Now, some faculty members will oftentimes just use a bookshelf and that is fine. You do wanna make sure though, that you don't have people walking, your pets making a pit stop or any distracting things going on in your background. So while mine is cluttered, at least everything is static and it would be much more distracting if my significant other or my dog was running around in the background. So take that into account when you sit down and say, I'm gonna film a lecture video. So speaking of filming these lecture videos, let's talk about how long they should be. Your lecture videos do not need to be 45 minutes long. And it is tempting just to sit down and record what you would say in a face-to-face -face lecture. When we're in the online atmosphere, sitting down and watching five 45 minute lectures for a week of material can be overwhelming to your online student. And oftentimes when we do these longer videos, we don't take the time in post edit to cut out any of those long awkward pauses or where we went off on tangents or where we mess up. Now the other thing that we see oftentimes is just voiceover on PowerPoints. And this is a very tempting alternative to provide your students with a source of learning online. It's not exactly effective nor interactive. So when professors find themselves doing this, more often than not, it is us playing the slideshow and reading exactly what it says. So this is where you can think of your video as supplemental. For example, I teach a course called Horse Management. In my course, we learn about the basic skills and information as it relates to owning a horse and taking care of it. So each week, I provide my students with two outside readings provided through extension articles. This could be your textbook. I also type up a page in Canvas where I talk about a couple of those key highlights that we discussed in those readings or maybe they weren't touched on enough in the readings. I feel like they are important. So for example, when we have our health lab, I really emphasize some of those specific diseases that the horses can get. And then lastly, I always try to include at least one video that my students can watch. It really goes more in depth in some of those hands-on or complicated topics. So while my students can read the steps for how to listen to their horse's heartbeat or administer wormer, I also provide them photos for how to do it. And then again, I provide them with a video walking them through how to do it. I also utilize video in my lab as part of assignments. So my students do have to do a barn tour evaluation. And because they were unable to attend lab in person, I used my camera and I took them on a tour myself in more of a vlog style. So this is something, if you're teaching a science lab, it would be a great way to teach lab safety and handling before you actually get into the lab. So even if you do go back to teaching face-to-face, -face, using video and your online platform as more of a hybrid is a great way to incorporate all the information you want your students to know. So now that you understand a couple of the considerations on the front end of recording, let's talk a little bit about what we can do in the post. So I already kind of alluded to shortening our videos because that time of our video is extremely important. One of the other things that you can do in post is just adjust the color. And a lot of times your photo editing softwares will have the ability to automatically do this for you. So I highly encourage you just to take that extra click of a mouse to make it look a little better. So while when you're editing your videos, you don't exactly have to have a bunch of sound effects or background noise, if you wanted to take that extra time to do it, you can do it. And there'll be a later video explaining how you can do these things in iMovie, Adobe, as well as re-downloading our good old friend Movie Maker. So making your lecture videos, it's honestly gonna be a little more time consuming than you probably were expecting. But keep in mind, once you make these videos, they're good, they're gold. As long as the science or the literature doesn't change, you can reuse these videos year after year. So I do encourage you to put in the effort to make the best production possible that you can use across not just one classroom, but multiple classrooms. So that's really it on this video. I just kind of wanted to give you some guiding principles. We're gonna have 
more videos in this series. They're gonna go over the editing process as well as some of those studio canvas functions that can be integrated into Quiz. We're gonna talk about other ways you can implement videos to make your course run smoothly.